When I think of Scotland, I think of music. And if you think of Scottish music, you'll always think of bagpipes. There's nothing else more strongly associated with that Scottish culture, I reckon. So today, I've booked myself on the Viking bagpipes and whiskey appreciation excursion. But I might swap them around because I reckon the bagpipes might sound a little bit better. Before my whiskey and bagpipe experience begins, my bagpipe instructor, Louise Marshall, greets me and leads the way. This experience is another Viking optional shore excursion and something I just couldn't pass on my first ever trip to Edinburgh. Hi, welcome. And the fun begins with a three dram whiskey tasting hosted by Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Ambassador, James. This is serious stuff and you learn a bit about the wee drop that kept many a Scot running strongly during the coldest of wintry days. James first talks me through how to get the most out of each sip. So the line, yeah. we swirl and then nosing, yeah. kind of empty out my lungs, keep my mouth open. Oh. Good hard sniff. We are taking spirit or whiskey straight from the casks. Yeah. And so it's at cast strength. This is sitting at about 60%. Wow. which is what, 120 proof, um, so strong stuff. And after tasting some of the finest whiskey on offer, my bagpiper is awaiting me. But not any old bagpipe instructor, my instructor is a lady, and one who has performed for luminary visitors, such as Pope Benedict VI. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Louise, you are Fabulous. Thank you very much. So, Louise, how did you find yourself playing the bagpipes? Well, my dad was the piper at Gretna Green for 44 years. Mm -hmm. And I used to go, from the age of two, actually, I used to sit on the turnstile and whistle all the tunes that he played. My two brothers were pipers. They also played there. My sister did the Highland dancing, and I just loved the pipes. Tell me about this incredible instrument, the bagpipes. Yes. Um, right, OK, well, if you're talking about the origins of the great Highland bagpipe, uh, people tend to think that they came from Egypt. In Egypt? Absolutely. Most people think, you know, the pipes come from Scotland. Obviously, we've, we've adopted them, and most countries have their own um, type of pipes all, yeah. like, all over the world. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't know the exact history of what? the Great Highland Bagpipe. But to have any chance of successfully playing the bagpipes myself, Louise explains I need to be appropriately dressed for the job. So it's off to the dressing room for me. Well, I'm feeling like I'm really the part, Louise. You look absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you. Really suits you. I think I can play. Go for it. All right. Yeah, so basically Ready? just blow into the bag, grip it with your teeth, give it laldi until the bag is as full as a balloon. That's right, keep going. Give it a good puff. Keep going, keep going. Oh, OK, jump. If I put my pipes down, I can help you. Right, can that tight underneath this arm? That's it, bring this chanter down, hold it, keep blowing. Well, that was disappointing. Here I was thinking I could play the bagpipes. Never mind, I suppose you can't be good at everything. I sucked, I know, but what an incredible experience. And I got to play with two of Scotland's favourite instruments, the whisky, which I thought I did very well with, the bagpipe, a couple of years practice, it might be okay. Maybe those Cochrans that were living around here were never good at music, I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, this is an experience to remember. This is a day out in Ebra I will never forget. Hopefully you get to experience it soon too.